WEEI Late Night with KJ Carson on WEEI. The calendar dictates that we're not going to be able to play the first two series of the regular season, and those games are officially canceled. We're prepared to continue negotiations. We've been informed that the MLBPA is headed back to New York, meaning that no agreement is possible until at least Thursday. As such, camps could not meaningfully operate until at least March 8th, leaving only 23 days before the scheduled opening day. The clubs and our owners fully understand just how important it is to our millions of fans that we get the game on the field as soon as possible. To that end, we want a bargain and we want an agreement with the Players Association as quickly as possible. Late night with KJ on WEEI. That's Major League Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred saying baseball is still locked out and now games are going to be missed. At least six so far. Hope you're doing well. I know there are many frustrated people tonight with the sport of baseball, with ownership, with players. There is blame to go all around. I'd love to hear your thoughts. 617-779-7937 or the text line 37937. I have to tell you a story, and this is going to lead into what kind of happened today and what's kind of always been going on with baseball for about the last 30 years. So maybe about 15 years ago at a place I was working, the CEO, president of the company, came to do one of these town hall visits, right? Seats are set up. People are ready for him to come speak. Very well-known guy in our industry. So what I noticed was that nobody was sitting in the first three rows of this whole meeting. And I was like, wow, I, I, this uh, people are really, really intimidated by these owner, this owner. Like, why? He's just a man. Now, of course, his suit may cost probably $10,000, so much so that someone came off the elevator bumped him, and he spilled his tea on this potentially $10,000 suit. Trust me, this is going somewhere. So as the meeting started, he looked and he said, wait a minute. Why isn't anybody sitting in the front? Nobody says anything. He says, I'll give you 100 bucks to the first person come sits up here. It still takes about 45 seconds before a young lady takes the seat. He pulls money out of his pocket and says, okay, now I can start this thing. And one of the things he talked about in this meeting is this term called EBITDA. That's an acronym for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Found this stuff fascinating. Now, everything you've heard, except for maybe the A, the amortization, which is the process of starting to write down on your asset as things start off. So for a Major League Baseball owner, well, what's starting the league a couple of weeks later month later when I could write down this asset going into the last part of the fiscal year. I know, KJ, this is a lot of business. This is a sports station, but I'm trying to get you to understand the mind of the owner isn't necessarily the same mind as the baseball fan. So sometimes when you love something so much, you don't notice the big picture of things. And that's a lot of baseball fans. So it's very easy to be Mad at the owners, and I get that. But listen to just just a handful of owners and what they do and tell me it screams baseball or sports at all. One was an energy company founder. Another owned newspapers and mountain resorts. Okay, at least there's a little sport there, right? One is the son of founders of a major retail clothing chain. Another sold his outdoor billboard company for $8 billion. Another a lawyer who's heavily invested in politics. A wealth management firm owner. A hedge fund manager. Uh, that's a billionaire, executive vice president of a produce company, and founder of a software company. I'm not going to tell you the names of those teams, but those are owners of teams that people have loved for hundreds of years. And I'm looking at this, and I said maybe three of those were businesses 50 years ago. Earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. It's another way of saying, how much money do I make before I can write down every possible loss to recoup my gains? It's as a business game. You just happen to love the sport of the game. 617-779-7937. 
Text line 37937. It's KJ. I'm going to get into some more stuff that's just going to blow your mind of how baseball for a lot of these owners is no different than moving widgets for their companies. Here's Rob Manford. He's concerned about the fans, he says. When you guys are you know, weighing these offers with the owners and, and talking things through, how much of it all do you weigh the financial impact on people who aren't in the room, you know, the workers at the stadiums who get affected, and, and obviously the fans? Yeah, look, I think that um, the concern about our fans is at the very top of our consideration list, followed closely by you know places like where we're standing, um, where people's livelihood depends on baseball, spring training baseball, and uh, certainly an important part of the calculus for us and for our owners. You know what the owner's main concern is? Making sure that there are not too many widgets that cost too much money and affecting the EBITDA, the amortization. Why, it still has worth, right? Because let's just say you pay a guy $30 million a year, but he's on the 60-day disable list. That's a loss. You've got to recoup that somehow and still pay that out. Gosh, my econ professor, why did he give me an F, Ben Charleston, in college? I, this is great macroeconomics. This is a mac. Who would think you would get a macroeconomics lesson on late night here on WEI? Did you think so, Ben? I was not expecting that. You were you know? not expecting this. But again, it's important to understand how these owners work, and it's a lot more complicated than just saying they're greedy. Oh, oh they pinch pennies harder than than crabs knowing they're about to get chosen for a meal. Watch this. Owners say they want a lower minimum salary, a lower minimum salary. But watch what what happens. In 2021, at the final 26-man roster, listen to how many players were getting the league minimum on these following rosters. All of these rosters were the lowest spending ones. The Orioles, 16 of 26 players, minimum wage. Marlins, 13 players, minimum wage. Pirates, 9. Rangers, 14. Angels, 14. Cubs, 15. Guardians, former uh, Indians, 5. The Rays, 6. Nationals, 15. A's, 10. Royals, 10. Diamondbacks, 10. 12 teams with those amount of players, 137 players on those 12 teams total, making minimum wage. Minimum wage. Again, EBITDA, remember that term, e- earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. The 12 lowest payrolls have 137 players making minimum wage. Those 30, 137 players is 18% of the entire major leagues. Nearly 20, and that's just 12 teams. So what do you think happens when, let's say, a guy at the top of the chain is making $20 million? Now, of course, some people go up with the payroll and they pay the luxury tax. That's great, but this is the secret. And it's not just, you know, hey, the crazy thing is, you know, with the the minimum of five, $570,500, it puts it in perspective. You have a lot of players on the team that make nothing, and they look over and see three or four guys who seem to make everything. And whatever that everything may be, whether it's $8 million or $10 million, it seems like a huge chasm. You know what that causes? Division amongst the ranks. Earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. The D is in depreciation. The owners don't see the value in the in the players association as much as they used to. This is a totally different league than when Kurt Flug was fly, was was fighting for for the right to be able to a free agency. We're we're way past that. Way past that. In fact, the season could be delayed. It could be destroyed. Here's Michael Wilbon from ESPN. I mean, I don't see why anybody would really be surprised. We've been talking about this since the end of last summer, uh, certainly into fall, into the October Classic, about how these two sides, the history of it, where we thought they were now. We just had Jeff Passon on, you and I, right on our show last week. I mean, it, it didn't seem to be any reason for optimism. Optimism, Tony, was incredibly naive. He, and, and for those people who thought, well, maybe the, the sides have softened their positions against each other over the years. No, 
I mean, Jeff, who, who was plugged in as anybody covering the sport, said, no, the two sides still hate each other. So what were we going to see that was going to lead us to believe that the season would start on time? The only question now is how, how long are we talking about? Are we talking about a season which is destroyed from the front instead of the back, like 1994 and then 1995 was from the front? Yeah. Are the season, is the season going to be destroyed or are they going to get themselves together at a time where I don't believe the country has any stomach for this, pull themselves together, look beyond outside of themselves and say, fellas, we need to put a product out there. I don't think they're that smart. I don't think they're that instinctive. I don't think that they care that much about what the general public thinks. And I think we could be looking at a, a season that is destroyed, maybe not entirely missed, but destroyed. Widgets. Widgets. Those 12 teams that I mentioned that had, what, 137 total players, 18% of the league making minimum wage on their squads, not a single one of their payrolls for the 26-man roster at the end of 2021 was more than $53 million. Oh, and the average is 83. So I stopped at 12 teams. I just did a little, I just did a little beaker sample there. 